Haverford West is changing, and at the centre of that transformation is a new footbridge that's about to redefine how people move through the town. Part of a wider regeneration plan led by Pembrokeshire County Council, this bridge will do more than link two sides of the river. It will help reconnect people to the town's heart. Appointed by Walters, centre-great engineering were brought in to take on one of the most demanding elements of the project, the fabrication of the entire structure. With over 120 tonnes of steel and a highly detailed low-profile design, this wasn't a typical fabrication job. It required a different level of precision and collaboration. In this video, we'll be speaking with Andy Smith, project manager at Centre Great Engineering, who has been leading the delivery of this complex build. From workshop to riverbank, he'll take us through the challenges, the coordination, and the sheer effort behind bringing this structure to life. Good afternoon, my name is Andrew Smith. I'm a project manager for Centigrade Engineering. Centigrade have been involved in this project since November 2023, when we were first contacted uh, by clients with the potential to put a bid together for these, this project. Um, <clears throat> since we um, went through all the tenders process, we were awarded the contract in April 2024, which started all the 3D modelling works. Um, that were required. These were all based off engineers' drawings, um, so we employed a bespoke team of draftsmen. I think they had a total of six draftsmen working on the project at any one time, um, all working using the 3D Tekla software um, to create the what initially was called a wireframe. This was then developed into the individual pieces that were made up to create the footbridge. What makes this bridge unique or significant in terms of its design and engineering? The bridge, the uniqueness of the structure is that there isn't a single rolled section within the bridge. Every shape that has been made has all been formed with a number of individual plates that have then all been welded together. In total, um, we've got a bridge that's 30 metres long, total span. Um, widest part is five, five and a half metres wide, four and a half metres at the narrowest point, curves in two directions, over three and a half thousand individual pieces of steel have been welded together to create the bespoke shape that we've got. Can you talk us through the process of fabricating the bridge in the workshop? So fabrication process, we started with what we deemed as the central axis which are fabricated components that are made up of five sections, four diagonals, a horizontal piece. Each of those are then constru individually constructed of eight individual plates, all welded together, um, which were formed individually. Then they were all brought together as a single entity. Um, we set up specific jigs within the workshop because the geometry of every single one is all different because the bridge goes from a, a quite a large depth at the ends, tapers to the middle and then becomes deeper again at the other end, as well as the fact that the sides are all cambering inwards as well. So um, everything was unique. Um, for the main cords, top and bottom cords, again, we made bespoke template plates with um, laser cut jigs that we could sit the plates in that would form the basic profile in the two directions. So we could form the main shapes, get them all tap welded together, and then they were sent off to the welders to weld each section together. Were there any logistical challenges during the transportation of the bridge from the workshop to site? The, the logistics was one of the key things that we looked at right from day one. Um, as I said before, the overall bridge is 30 metres long, five and a half metres wide on a, a radial curve. So transporting in one piece was never an option to start with. Um, we looked at the old option of sectioning the bridge into three sections. Um, again, there was design constraints that prevented that. So in the end, the bridge was split into completely along the whole length longitudinally and then at third points transversely. So we actually started making the bridge in six individual sections. Um, Early doors during the fabrication process, we realised that the narrowest two sections, we could actually weld those together within the workshop environment, mitigating time on site and transport it to site. Um, yes, we needed police escort, 
because it was just over four and a half meters wide, but that was the only constraint that we had. Um, weight wise, it was only 30, 35 ton um, for that complete section. So they were the constraints that we had to deal with. The bridge was spray painted on site. Was that planned from the outset or in response to constraints? The painting of the bridge on site was planned from the outset. We always knew that there was a significant amount of welding work that we needed to do. So the idea of fully coating all the sections, masking areas about where the welding was going to be done, and then just reapplying just those little sections on site, we were going to end up with an inferior project prior product. So the idea was taken right up to the start. We would blast, we would primer coat, we would intermediate coat off-site work as much as we could. We would then build up those coats in the area on site and then the full top coat would be sprayed in one go on site to create a uh, pristine product. What are the biggest technical or engineering challenges you and your team have faced during this project? The biggest hurdle to overcome was a significant amount of weld that we've had to apply. Um, in a lot of cases, most of the plates are 25 mil thick with full strength butt welds, um, which meant that in lots of areas there are at least 25 to 30 runs of weld per meter per section times eight joints for all the way around. Uh, I think we've calculated it, that in total there is somewhere in the region of a thousand miles of weld gone into this project which equates to around about 14 tonne of welding wire. We cal somebody calculated it that if you did the Welsh coastal path and then went off as dike from Chepstow back up to Prestatyn, that's around about the amount of welding wire we've used. What has been your approach to managing the on-site works, especially coordinating between teams like the scaffolders, painters and fabricators? Um, management of the works has been <laughs> Management of the works on site has been quite straightforward, if I'm honest. Um, there are specific processes that need to be done before the follow-on team can come in. Um, the biggest hurdle, really, that we had to encounter was making sure that we had enough qualified welding personnel available for the periods that we needed them. Um, as I said, there's a lot of welding went on on site. I think at the peak, we had eight welders working here all working in different areas and again making sure that we weren't over applying heat into too many areas that would then introduce um, distortion into the structure. So the bridge is due to be installed later in August. What exactly does the installation involve? <clears throat> so, so for the install, um, the bridge itself will weigh, when it's fully completed, 120 tonnes. Um, the installation location is 63 metres away that we have to lift over existing retail units. Obviously, they won't be live at the time of the lift. Um, we're utilising, uh, as a contract lift, services of Ainsco Crane Hire, who are bringing in um, one of the largest cranes that they have in the country to carry out the lift. Um, the crane itself is going to take a week to build, five days to build, we will then perform the lift on a Saturday night once everywhere is all closed up and all the local businesses have closed and we've mitigated as much of the personnel out of the areas as we can. Exclusion zones will be put into place. Lift will be carried out to install the new bridge. The existing bridge that currently sits adjacent to where the new bridge is to be installed will be lifted out on the same evening, weather permitting. Um, and then for the following week, next five days, the crane will be unbuilt and derigged and we removed from site. Looking back, what are you most proud of about this project? Um, I think the biggest pride for me is in, I'm in my mid fifties now, but in structural steel work since I was 16. I honestly can say I have never seen craftsmanship like I've seen on this bridge. The way that the workshop integrated with Myself and Graham, the technical manager of the drawing office, with the specialist drawing office resource that we bought in. Um, we developed how we were going to build the job, how it needed to be detailed, the sequence that everything needed to be done. Um, the collaboration work was fantastic. And 
I don't think we'd have achieved it without everybody working together because there was times all of us were looking at this thinking, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do this. And yet each obstacle, we've come up with a plan, we've come up with an idea, we've come up with a principle and we've overcome that. And I think that will set centigrade in good stead for future structures coming forward because I'm not sure we'll ever see another one as complex as this again. A huge thank you to Andy for giving us a clear view of the work involved, from the early stages of fabrication through to site delivery. This has been a demanding project, both technically and logistically, and it's a strong example of how detailed planning and skilled execution come together to meet a very specific design brief. Next, we speak with Dave Chapman, where he talks us through the next phase of the project. My name is Dave Chapman, Engineering Director, Centigrade Engineering. Um, I'll be working with the boys on the installation and the removal of the bridge on Saturday night. How will you protect the bridge during the installation? But first of all, we put the protection on the top corner of the bridge so for when the scaffold is being removed, in case any of the scaffold has dropped anything or, or knocked it with the tube. So we decided to leave it on the bridge now because when the rigging is going onto the bridge, uh, the slings will be moving around and if any of the slings hit the top cord, it's protected from the slings. Can you talk us through how the bridge will be installed? Right, on Saturday, we're going to pick up the main bridge from the compound, slew the main bridge around, lower into position, and then jack it up so that uh, we can lower off on the crane because we're tight for time. Because as soon as we got this new bridge in, we need to take the old bridge away. Uh, so we need to slew the crane back around the compound, adjust the ballast in the tray of the crane, come back around, pick the spreader beams up and lifting beam, uh, to lift the old bridge out. As soon as the old bridge is in the compound, uh, takes the pressure off the whole team and then we can adjust this bridge to suit uh, the levels that Walters require. How do you think the project has gone from start to finish? I think the project has gone very well so far. Um, it's been good working with Walters. The Walters boys have been uh, very good and the enthusiasm of the whole team down here, I visited site twice, is very good um, and it's, it's, it's a nice site. On the 16th of August 2025, a key milestone was reached in the regeneration of Haverford West, as the town's new pedestrian footbridge was carefully lifted into place over the River Cleddow. After months of planning, coordination and preparation, the team was ready for one of the most complex and anticipated moments of the project. A highly skilled team of lifting contractors, supported by Walters, Centre Great Engineering and Atkins Realis, had spent the preceding weeks assembling the bridge on site section by section. Now, all that remained was to guide it into its final position. As the crane took the weight and the bridge slowly began to rise, a quiet stillness settled over the site. The entire team, from project managers to engineers, stood in anticipation, watching every movement with bated breath. The bridge, weighing over 120 tonnes, was carefully rotated and manoeuvred across the river. Every adjustment was deliberate, every movement monitored in real time by the crews on the ground and in the control cabin above. Precision was everything. A collective sigh of relief followed. Smiles appeared. Quiet congratulations were exchanged. The team knew they had delivered something special, not only safely and smoothly, but to the highest standard. But the work wasn't over yet. With the new bridge now securely in place, attention turned to the next task, the removal of the existing footbridge. The structure that had spanned the river for decades was carefully unfastened, lifted and taken away, its retirement marking the end of one era and the beginning of another. The successful completion of both lifts, executed flawlessly and without incident, was a testament to the skill, planning and dedication of everyone involved. Through teamwork, trust and technical excellence, a new connection has been made in the heart of Haverford West. A bridge built with purpose, placed with care and ready to serve the town for generations to come. Now that the bridge is installed, we spoke with Tom Morris, the project manager for Walters, who has been overseeing the project from the start. Here, Tom shares how Centigrate Engineering were appointed to build the bridge and what has impressed him most about their work throughout the process. From the planning phase early on, trying to agree the programme to then the technical aspects, again the fabrication drawings agreed and signed off with the designer. Um, it's a very technical, uh, difficult uh, structure to build, so um, there was a lot of interaction and collaboration between ourselves, Centigrade, Atkins, the designers 
to get the design agreed and then onto the site works then getting it delivered to site and installed it all went to plan and um, yeah the end product looks very very good the craftsmanship of the the welding has been very very good to get the some of the intricate uh, radiuses and stuff like that is a lot of additional welding and grinding away and the workmanship that's gone into that has been yeah sort of the highest order and then also just getting the the design and the fabrication agreed um, it's a very uh, unique structure it's a signature bridge as they call it so to get some of the geometry to work and the welds to um, be able to fabricate it as it's envisaged by the architect i think it's been yeah quite a, quite a feat to be able to get the aspirations of the architect actually built on site so um, yeah the end product's very very uh, good quality and all the the site team and the client team are very happy with the, with the end works centigreet are proud of everyone involved in delivering this landmark project and grateful for the hard work collaboration and dedication shown throughout a special thank you to all those who contributed to this video and kindly provided footage to help showcase the Haverford West Bridge and the team behind it.